Welcome to this video on all the different question types in Microsoft Forms. So I use Microsoft Forms to create surveys, to get feedback on either courses I've run or anything, any other sort of sessions or content. And you can also use it to check knowledge as well by using the quiz function. But the question types are the same. I have some pr separate videos further back in this channel, but I thought it'd be really nice to pull all of this together and just do a nice refresh on all the quick question types in one video. So there are eight different ones and I'm going to do them in the order that they appear on the selection list. So it's nice and clear and we'll get started and go through. Some of the bits of functionality will be the same across all question types. So I'm in a form, created a form, and I've got the add new button. When I click on that add new button, it's going to give me all of my different question types. And you can see the first four there, and then you can see the rest of the question types available. So let's start with a choice question first. Now you've got two options in this one. You can either have a single choice, so there's only one answer you want, or you can have multiple answers if you want to give them multiple options. Now this, let's just go through a little bit of functionality on this one that's the same across all of them. You can see to the top right, you've got a bin to delete the question. You've got two pieces of paper to copy the question if you want to copy the question type. Once you've got a number of questions in there, it's quite hard to see there, but you can move the questions up and down really easily. And in the pit, in the part where you type the question, you can drag media or insert media like pictures and things like that into the question to make it more interactive. So I'm just going to put in a question type because what happens when you do that, when you start typing in a question, forms will make some suggestions on the types of answers that you might want, which you'll see below there. You can see add all, you've got yes, no, and maybe. You can either add all of them or you just can, can click on them or you can go into where it says option one or two and add your own and you will see a picture icon as well there. So I'm just gonna click on yes and then click on no. And you can see I've quickly got those in there. It's trying to be clever, it's trying to help me. It worked this time, it might not work all the time for you. You can see I can add another row with another bit of detail. I'll click on the bin if I don't want it. And I can add an other option where it gives them the option to type something in. Again, if I hover to the end, I can delete it. So very simple, very quick and easy to work with. That's a single answer, but if I want people to give people the opportunity to select more than one, it's not relevant for my example, but if I did click on multiple answers, you can see the circle changes to a box and they'll be able to click on more than one option. And you can you also have the ability to, to select um, a total amount of options. So you may have a list of 10 things and you want them to select the top three, then, you can use that and that's a really nice bit of functionality. So you get the data that you're looking for. Just on every single question type, you can make the question required, so mandatory or not. And you'll also have three dots in the bottom right, which will shuffle the options. It's not really relevant on this question. It's really useful on a quiz or if you wanna get some feedback but you don't wanna, you don't want everyone to see the same list. You want it to be real data rather than everyone just selecting the top option. Um, you've got drop down rather than bullets. So you'll they'll see a drop down rather than that. I quite like the bullets, the radio buttons. You've got a subtitle option if you want to add more information into your question. You'll see that on a lot of them. And you've also got the branching option. Now I've got a separate video on branching. And there you can you can define on your form 
if someone says yes, then they may get sent to a certain question. If someone says no, they may get sent to a different question to give you more information. So that's what branching is all about. You wouldn't do your branching until you've put all your questions in there. So it becomes really clear and then it just directs people based on what answers they put into the previous questions, which is quite useful. So there's you've got a simple choice question where you've got either a single choice or a multiple choice. Let's have a look at the next option. I'm going to carry on going down and do text. So a nice simple one. Again, I've got a question section. Everything looks really similar. So I'm going to get some feedback. Now you've got this box which says enter your answer. Now below there you've got long answer. And if you click on long answer, it just makes the box a bit bigger. And it's a bit psychological that if you're expecting them to type a little bit more in than maybe just a word, you want to have a long answer box. It's a bigger box. People naturally want to put more in there. You've also got the required just like before. And in the, the dots, they'll be slightly different depending on the question type. But here I've got subtitle. I've got restrictions. So let's just click on restrictions. If you want to limit what someone can put into that box, you can have numbers greater than, less than, equal to, between, not between if you want to, or if you just want some text, then you're not going to bother with restrictions. And you do have the branching option as well. But a nice simple one where you can get a little bit more open, honest feedback. And again, make it mandatory by ticking on required or leave it off. So the third question type then is rating. So when I click on rating, You'll see again, everything looks really similar. And I have stars and I have levels in there. So if I click on levels, you can see I can actually go up and I can have a higher rating up to 10. So if you want to rate something out of 10, you can absolutely do that. The standard there is five. And it does have stars, but you can change the shape. You can have it as a number. You can have it as a ribbon, a heart. Let's have a look what else you can have if I scroll down. Smiley face, flag, light bulb, trophy, trophy, sorry, tick. All sorts of different ways that you can get a rating. And again, you're just going to pop a question in there. You've got the rest of the functions. You can make this required. And then if we look at the three dots for this one, you've got subtitle, you've got label and branching. So if I click on label, you can just see there, you can label the first and the last one so that people know that one is maybe poor and five is excellent. It's a really nice bit to just add a little bit of extra, just in case someone might not know uh, what the scale is and which way they should be, because sometimes one is great in certain things. Just gonna take that labeling off and that's the third question type. So let's have a look at the fourth one then. It's a date, so this is a super easy one. This might be used if you want to capture some information about the date that someone went on a course or a session or attended something or even just the date of today. They might want someone to put that in or it might be a future date you want them to pop in. So that's in there. You can see I've got please input the date. If I click on the three dots, I've just got a subtitle and branching on this one. So it's a nice, simple, quick one if you want to capture a date. And it means that the format will be standard across all the answers. And then you can filter when you get the results. And once I've gone through all the different eight question types, I'll do a preview and we'll just have a look. So that's number four. Let's go on to number five. I'm going to have to go to my arrow now and I'm gonna go to a ranking. So this is where you can get people to rank things in order, maybe what they found really useful, what they didn't find really useful, um, what they want to know more about, things like that. So you can get a feeling about what's going on and I've got my different option boxes. I'm just gonna type some in there.
So you can add as many as you want, you can delete what you want, and then this question type, people will go in there and rate these in order of importance, things like that. You can obviously add a little bit more information into the title. And if I click on the three dots for this one, you've got shuffle options and branching. So let's just go into shuffle options for a second. And you won't see it until I preview, but that just means that when this gets sent out, when someone does this, it'll be shuffled. So again, everyone will see the top one first and just leave it as is. You'll get more realistic answers. So really nice one to play around with if you want people to rate things. Let's have a look at number six. We are getting closer to the end. We've got Likert. Now Likert, I use if I want to get a load of bits of information really quickly, but I don't want to have separate questions. So, so if I want to rate the following. So let's say I've got options. So let me just say add all there. And you can see at the top, I've got excellent, good, fair, poor, very good. You might want to have different ones there. You might want to start with certain ones in different places. Um, and then your statements, let's say, because this is a training feedback form, training style, length of course, just to give you some examples of the types of things that you might and obviously you can add more things in there interaction and then you can get some really useful information about lots of different things within one question and it's much easier for your users for your people who are filling in that form to go in and answer these really quickly i'm sure you'll see something similar with forms and surveys that you've completed so just be really careful how you're labeling those. I obviously did that very quickly, just using that information just to speed up this video a little bit. Um, and I can obviously reword them, change it around if I want to. And let's just have a look at the three dots for this type of question. I've just got subtitle and branching. So quite limited there, but a really useful question type. If you've got loads of similar answers you want for different questions, you can use this functionality. So that's question number type number six. Then I have upload file. So if you want people to upload uh, images, if you want them to upload documents, things like that, maybe it's certificates, you want them to upload, upload a certificate from the course that they're giving feedback on, you can obviously put in a question there. And then whoever has created this form will get those files to be able to view. You have the file number limit and the size limit as well. So you can really flex that to what you're expecting. If I click on the three dots, you've got subtitle, file type and branching. So let's just click on file type there a second because that's a different one on this one. And you can see there it's ticked all the different file types. But if you want to limit it just to PDFs or something, then you would just untick everything else and no one's going to upload anything by accident and you'll get the right format. So that's uploading. You can get some documents, some images, some video or audio attached to it. You might use forms to log an issue, in which case this may be really useful if you've got a login system that you use via forms and you might want someone to send an image or a video of the issue this is a really great question type to put into your form. The final one then, if I go on to the drop down, is net promoter score. So this is very sort of similar to rating, but it's formatted a little bit different. Um, and it's what a lot of companies use to see what their customers think about them. So it's already pre-filled in a question there, and it's giving you a zero to 10 with not all likely and extremely likely at the right hand side. You've got the required option again. And if I click on those three dots, you've just got a subtitle and branching on this one. So nice, simple, easy one to finish off with that you can pop in and use if that's going to be useful for your survey for your feedback form. So you've got eight different options there to play around with. And there's some great flexibility in those question types. 
like I said earlier, let's just have a look at the preview so we can see what this form looks like and you can see some of the functionality in there. Now remember, I didn't put branching or anything else on, so I'm just gonna be able to go straight down. So I've got that um, question where it's just a choice. So it's a yes or a no choice. Please give us some feedback. So I'm gonna enter some feedback. So I can obviously type and they need to be able to type correctly and spell correctly. So I can just type that in there. I've got that rating one where people will see when they hover, it will select it. I've got my date. So when I click on that one, it's going to drop down a calendar. So you can just see here how your users, how your people that fill out your form will be able to see these questions. So you can get a really, really nice feel for it. You can see they can even put in a future date. So this one, number five, is your rating one. So you may want to put a little bit of extra information in the question about um, rate in order, which ones are most important to you. But when the users click and drag, they can move them around. All the arrows to the right hand side will move them manually if they don't want to click and drag. The like question is a super, super useful one. Like I mentioned, you can get some good bits of information without having to have separate questions, especially if you're asking the same question for different parts. You can see you've got an upload file option there. It tells them the file types, the limit and the file number. And then finally, the last one at the bottom there, you've got that net promoter score zero to 10. So once they've completed all those, they will just press submit and you'll be able to see those results. So a nice video there covering all the different eight question types that you can use in Microsoft Forms. If you're creating a feedback form or a survey or anything else, I use it quite often. It's really nice just to collect forms, just to collect bits of information from your users. And then the way it presents it back is quite useful. If I click on back there, when I see collect responses, I obviously need to make sure I've sent them first and once I get responses, they will appear in the left on the responses tab. I'll be able to see some nice visual charts and things like that. And I'll be able to view more details and open those results in Excel as well. So really nice bit of application that I use there and some hopefully some useful bits of information and some useful ideas for those different question types. Please do have a go at those. Please do let me know how you get on. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel and let me know what videos you'd like me to record next.